Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Today, we're joined by Tan Mai. We're going to be talking about using reward systems and patients' social media to grow your myopia practice. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Thank you for joining us for this episode. I'm excited to be here with uh, Tom Mai. And uh, Tom and I have been uh, getting to know each other a bit more over the last couple of years, which has been a huge blessing. He's been making a big name for himself in the myopia space, and it's been really, really cool to see uh, how his success prior to me knowing him and is just even boiling up even more in the last couple of years. Tom, it's awesome to have you on the Myopia podcast. Absolutely. My pleasure. Um, everything that I've done was just for this moment to be on this podcast. <laughs> and so everything I've done has certainly paid off because I finally made it here. I, this has been my dream and it's come true. So here we are. Uh, you're too generous. So tell us a little bit about your practice, where you practice, what your setting is like, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. So I practice in uh, Orange County, California. That's where SCCO is. My alma mater is about the 15, 20-minute drive away, with depending on traffic, so it's longer. Um, when I go to a restaurant and I go to the bathroom, I look to my left, I look to my right, and there's an optometrist on either side of me because... Uh, <laughs> Which is everywhere here in Orange County because a lot of us that go to school here just end up loving the area and see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was told by my, uh, my practice management professors at SCCL don't open cold in Orange County. It's uh, not a good idea. And so, what I did was I opened cold in Orange County in 2015. <laughs> and uh, I knew from the very beginning that I wanted to do, uh, especially contact lenses, and my partner wanted to do vision therapy. I think. Dave, your practice is the same way, you and your wife. Right, and, yeah. And, um, and from the very beginning, we knew that, that that essentially was the focus of our practice. And uh, that was what we're going to be all in about. We're not going to dabble. We're not going to try and do everything. Because you can do everything. You can, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. And so we right. wanted to just dive in and just do the specialties. And that's where we, we've been our, our focus from the very beginning. And now it's full time. I don't see any primary care. All my patients... All day long, my entire schedule, and I'm booked out over a month, is scleral, ortho K, myopia, ortho K, scleral, myopia, just like back to back to back to back to back. There's nothing else in between. So um, it's uh, basically I've, I've uh, got what I wanted, and now I'm just uh, now it's spilling over where I'm hiring other doctors to do the same thing on their schedule. That's awesome. So when you started uh, in the myopia space, how how did you grow this practice, which is just doing specialty care? How did you get the word out? How did you grow into the myopia practice that you are? Yeah, uh, the number one way, and you sometimes people get a lot of bad advice. I think um, they say internal marketing is all way to go, and it's all about word of mouth. But that's totally not true because when you open cold, there is, I, there's no internal going on. <laughs> my, my only patient is my mom, you know, on day five. <laughs> so like, how, how do you get there, you know, with internal marketing if you've got no patients open cold? So that's bad advice. And it's, it's good advice if you have an established practice though. But if you have a new practice, that's bad advice because how can you get there? So I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of people will say, you, know, you should be posting on social media. You'll, you'll see them posting pictures of them with their patients with their glasses or their patients with their successful author case smiling and they're posting to their Facebook page. But what happens there is that only the people that already like your page will ever see it. You only have 100 followers. So it doesn't really go anywhere. And they do that. They, 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 they're very good about posting every month. There. But it ends up being a complete waste of time. Uh, what they should do instead is like one example is um, I don't ask patients to, when we take their pictures, if we can post on our website, we say, hey, uh, you know, what we do is, uh, can you post it on your page? And so if they post it on their page, their 300 friends that I don't know and who live out nearby are seeing essentially an endorsement that I trust this practice and I take my own kids here. And then their friends go, what is that? What's both okay? What's, like we have pictures where we had a, uh, 
We have Jedi Master Knights for vision therapy, and we have Ortho Knights for orthopedology. We have this big eyeball that says, you know, I'm treating my myopia with triage eyes. And so when we post those pictures and hashtag it on social media and the parents post it, that's 10 times better than I post it on my own site because it goes all to them. So we do that. If you do that with your every patient that you have, so let's say you're doing just two patients a month and both of those do it and then it snowballs and then next month you do those two and then those two share with their two friends and then you end up getting a couple other patients from those patients and then those patients are posting on their, on, on their, on their website, on their webpage as well. You start to generate that social media word of mouth and that's yeah. much more important than actual word of mouth in terms of like, you know, people talking and having video meetings. That's just like one example of where people kind of make a mistake in their social media marketing. They're, they're asking, they're posting in the wrong spot. That's brilliant. See, that's why we have you on here. So really, it shouldn't be about using your social media to grow your practice. It should be using your patient's social media to grow your practice. Exactly. Right? How do you... So uh, you you pose with the with the kid and be like, hey mom, take a picture, and then do you just you just that right out ask them, hey, will you post this on your social? What do you do? Yeah, so there's a saying I love: you don't get what you deserve in, in life, you get what you ask for. And the there reason because the reason why people aren't growing is they're not asking for it, and it's so simple. Patients will absolutely help you, and you just say this: um, we, we cheat a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, we cheat a little bit. We tell the patients, by the way. Uh, you can join our Ortho Knights Club. You can take this picture and post it to the social media page. If you do, you get, we call it inside video center dollars. And they use those dollars to buy things like gift cards. We've got plush toys with like Baby Yoda. We've got like Pokemon cards. Right, let's start over here. Let's yeah. slow down. Ortho Knights. Is that what you call this program? So one of our postings in social media is called Ortho Knights, but we basically, we knight them. We give them a shield and a sword and they take a picture with a shield and sword with a, with a little like cut out thing that says ortho knight on it. Yeah. And, and is it K N I or is it N I G H T? It's K N I G H T. Okay. So like they're a knight and this is uh and, and then that picture. So if they say, yes, I want to, I want to do this. Then you're like, Hey, we're holding this over you and you need to post this on social media. So here's this, this club that you get to be a part of. Is that yeah. what that, this is? It's just like a fun thing. We just say, you no, can no, join our it. cool yeah. kids club. And, uh, by the way, if you do it, you get this plush toy. And then the, the kid is begging mom to post on her social media page. What's this toy? The toy could be we have a we have a whole setup. Uh, we have a prize counter. It looks like Chuck E. Cheese, basically. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, it has like a case full of like a bunch of goodies, and we have stuff on like racks where we have well, not racks, shelves with like Nerf guns and um, you know plush toys and board games and all the all the stuff that kids like. If the kids says we like it, we'll get it, and we, and we have it there. And uh, do they uh, do they do they have to you know read the acuity chart for a ticket that they then sign in for it at like Chuck E. Cheese or how do they get how do they get these these prizes? They're yeah, they, posts on social media. Is that what it is? So there's a lot of different ways to earn these points. And so yeah, every every office should have a reward system. I love it. I, I remember when I got a haircut and I was like nine years old and. And the guy would give me like a bazooka joke up every time I went. And for some reason, that was stuck in my mind. And I always beg my mom, I want to go back to him because he gives me bazooka joke up. Anyways, kids are no different today than when I was growing up. So when kids, when they, well, we have a lot of different ways to earn dollars. One is they just show up to the office to their appointment on time. And if they do, we give them some dollars. We have uh, T-shirts that they wear. Uh, we have a trio size t-shirt. We also have a vision therapy. We have the, we call it the eye gym because they're working out their eyes and eye gym. And uh -huh. So we have a t-shirt for vision therapy as well. When they show up and they wear their shirts um, to the office, they give them extra dollars. And what happens usually is that they usually come to our office sometimes after school or maybe, maybe even in the middle of school. And what ends up happening is that they know they're coming to our office afterwards. They end up wearing our t-shirts to school too. And so they walk around just advertise our practice everywhere they go. Uh, and so if they show up with that t-shirt on, they get extra dollars. If mom posts on social media that, hey, this is the place to go to. I love 
inside radius and optometry, they get a lot of dollars. And I would not cheap out on the dollars. I would, I would hand them out like candy. So when they post um, to social media, for instance, it's the equivalent of like a $10 to $15 Amazon gift card, for instance. And hey, it's, it's, all, it's, it's, it's a, such a small expense for what you get out of it. Brilliant. Yeah. Wow. Hey, would you do me a favor? And uh, after the podcast is over, would you send me some pictures? And if somebody's watching this on the video, uh, which when we post it on YouTube, we'll actually throw up some of the pictures of what you have. If, if, if you're open to sharing, that would be really cool. I love this idea. What a great way to manipulate, I mean, encourage uh, <laughs> the uh, the the kids to take this seriously. I love it though because you know who looks forward to going to the eye doctor, and this is just a great way to encourage the kids that myopia management is uh, it can be fun. Um, I love this. So this is the Ortho Nights, and uh, this is one way to help really with your marketing. I mean, you're marketing with them wearing your T-shirts. You're marketing it with the post social media posts. And that's just really growing this within within your practice. And it's word of mouth, but it's word of mouth that's encouraged, right? Uh, that's right. Love it. Love and, it. And there are different ways to get it as well. Sometimes everyone has different uh, love languages. Everyone, everyone has different ways which they uh, appreciate receiving things. Some people don't want, want any prizes at all, and, and which is fine, which is great, actually. And instead, we might say something like this. Um, we love supporting uh, local sports teams, or we like uh, uh, donating to the Blind Children's Learning Center over in Santa Ana. And if you post to social media, we make a small donation to the Blind Children's Learning Center. And some parents would be like, wow, that's, that's way better than any Amazon gift card. That's, I am helping someone else and uh, by doing this simple posting, I will mm -hmm. absolutely post. And that altruistic ask is very easy to get as well as driving the kids that we also do. And so there's different ways to go about it. Um, and uh, patients absolutely would help you out. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Dude, that's totally different than what other people do in their practice. What are some other things that you think you might be doing that are really helping with your success that you, uh, you, you think we could share with other people? Yeah, there are a few mistakes that people make. If I were to say three mistakes, that the average optometrist makes. And if you solve this, you'll go from doing two cases a month to 20, to 30, mm. to 40, is if you fix these three things. The first thing that people make a mistake as number one is this. Most offices, it's easy to go to their myopia management program, in my opinion, because they have an established patient base versus opening calls like me. And so the opportunity is in the patients in the chair. So there's, there's a few things I would tweak in terms of your presentation to patients in your chair. The first one is, Usually there's a disconnect, and this could be in any specialty, any patient, anywhere. It doesn't matter what we're talking about myopia or we're talking about dry eye. There's a disconnect between always the chief complaint and the plan and what you recommend. So what happens is this. Do busy doctor comes in. They're seeing a bunch of uh, BSP patients. They find out that a minus two, eight-year-old kid comes in, and they go, oh, my gosh, I need to recommend myopia management. So then they do at their primary care exam. And then it ends up not working out. The parents have a bunch of questions they never heard about before because, and the, and the way that you're pushing it is very salesy because all of a sudden you're talking about myopia management, but they came for a pair of glasses because you can't see things far away. Okay. Yeah. So the chief complaint was I can't see the board far away, not myopia management. And so if you do that, you're going to fail. You need to change it with one quick tweak very easily. If they come in for glasses, you say, here's your glasses. It's all good. That's why you came in. I'm addressing your chief complaint. By the way, I'd like to have you come back because I'm worried that if we don't do anything with little giants myopia, it might get worse. Let's schedule yeah. a separate visit for you to come back to do that. You'll pick up your glasses that day, and then we'll have that visit dedicated to, uh, for a discussion of us talking about ways to stop us from getting worse. Now, at that follow-up visit, why are we here today? Oh, well, I'm here today because I want to learn about things we can do to stop little giants eyes from getting worse. And now when you present your myopia manager program, now your plan addresses the new chief company. Uh -huh. And so that, that needs to happen. So that's one big mistake that most downers do, uh, that they, they, they always have to match up the chief complaint to the plan. And they, to do that, yeah. you, should, you should break it up and reschedule. The other thing that a lot of doctors don't do is they don't 
talk to other patients about microwave management. For instance, when grandma comes in or mom comes in and the kid's not even there, but grandma, mom, uncle, aunt, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're on my own. They're like a minus five, minus six, minus seven, or minus three. It doesn't matter. I tell them also, hey, do you know that uh, for this minus seven patient who's a presbyter, you know, if they're 50, do you know that uh, you're a minus seven and uh, I'm a high minus myself? That we can actually stop the ice from getting worse, like that. That people like you and I don't need to exist anymore. And they go, I had no idea. <laughs> really? We don't need to exist. I yeah, that's know. like that's great. And then they go, really? Oh my, I can't believe technology is so amazing. And I go, yeah, technology is so amazing today. Your kids, your nephews, your nieces, whoever it doesn't matter. Anyone you know, the friend that you run into who has a kid, not even your own kids, this shouldn't exist anymore. And then what happens is that they hear that and they start telling other people. And so I'm marketing not to patients in the room, I'm marketing to other patients as well who don't even bring their kids in that this exists and it's real. And that yeah. also helps to drive it. So you need to talk to, you need to educate all your patients about it, what you do. Yeah. Uh, and then you also need to always make sure the chief complaint addresses the plan. Um, but the plan addresses the chief complaint. Other mistake is not having a market management counselor or someone dedicated to the office that actually does it. So, um, a lot of doctors, especially your established, uh, one of my favorite books is Who Not Have. And uh, let's say you or think I need to grow my myopia practice. And a lot of doctors start thinking very literally. I need to figure out how to do it. I need to figure out how to do marketing. I need to figure out how to do all this. No, you don't need to figure any of that out. Either you get someone else who's already figured it out, just tell you what to do. Or you, you, know, you, or you have a hire a new grad and have them do it. Like there are different ways to skin the fish. You know, is that you basically cheat and you leverage the learnings of other people that have done it before you because mm-hmm. success is lose. And all you do is just copy everything that they do and just install it in your practice and have them even come in and you can hire someone to come in and have them train your staff. You can hire someone yeah. to come in and have them train you. And, uh, and there's just follow their system. And so that's another mistake that most, most doctors do. Yeah. And, you know, the beauty about that is we're getting more and more of those sort of things happening. We have Treehouse, which I know you're a part of, that does that sort of work. They come in and they help you implement myopia management into your practice if if maybe you've been dabbling. There's other, some other organizations, and there's continuing to be more and more groups like that that are helping. I like that. Who, not how. Uh, that's a, a great book recommendation. And, you know, um, why reinvent the wheel? right? If it's already been built, the wheel we have is pretty good. Um, there may be ways to improve upon it, but building it from scratch can really be a major, major undertaking. That's fantastic advice. Fantastic. Now, um, before I let you go, uh, I wanted to just take a, a, a moment and have you talk a little bit about um, some of the educational initiatives that you have available for people if they want to you know, expand their own myopia practice. I know you've had some, um, some, some courses and you lecture a little bit. Can you share a little bit more about what you're doing to help doctors? Yeah. So I do have a uh, orthopedic keratology class that I teach. Um, I'm not doing that as much anymore because I'm, I'm focusing more on my time. I'm helping the current doctors that I have uh, with Treehouse Eyes. Yep. I'm the director of myopia management there. And I just, one thing that I've found is that one of my big passions is, uh, Helping, I, I, if I'm trying to really accomplish one of my mission statements, which is help more kids everywhere achieve better vision for life, I always think about leverage. And I can treat, you know, 30 kids a month in my office. Yeah. But that's not enough. It, we need yeah. to have every doctor doing that and then, and then, and, and, and doing it even more. We should be treating 100, 200, 200 children a month. Right. And so my next, my next initiative, one thing that I'm passionate about is teaching other doctors how to do my way magic in their offices everywhere. And it doesn't even matter if you're in the same county as me. It doesn't matter if you're in the same city as me. I don't care. Right. More kids need help and we don't compete whatsoever. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm passionate about helping the other doctors in my triage eyes group. I'm passionate about helping other doctors everywhere do my way management. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And if you all uh, think that this is a big deal, which I think it is, then uh, it's all the, the tide will lift all our boats and it'll be good. Yeah, yeah. 
So um, some things that people can do to learn more about you. Do you, uh, you want to share your, uh, your social media handles or some websites or anything where people can learn more about you? Yeah. Um, you, can also, you can also learn more about our practice at InsightVisionOC at gmail. I'm uh, sorry, InsightVisionOC.com. You can email me if you have any questions at Dr. Mai, it's D-R-M-A-I at InsightVisionOC.com. Um, I, that might be a little bit dangerous. Uh, don't send me too many emails. But uh, <laughs> but happy to help a few of you guys out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's how you can reach me. Um, we also have, you know, Facebook and, and Instagram. Uh, it's all slash Inside Vision OC. Um, those things have definitely helped to uh, you know, generate a lot of uh, uh, interest in our program, definitely. And uh, our website also, you know, talking about who, not how. Uh, one of my favorite things, one of my favorite sayings is, uh, why spend less when you can spend more? And <laughs> the reason why I love that saying is because most people don't spend enough money on things like marketing. Most people don't leverage their time and attention. They try and do everything themselves and they become their bottleneck. And when you become your own bottleneck and you end up doing everything, it's only a matter of time until implosion happens. When you're trying to see all the patients, trying to manage all your staff, trying to grow your team, trying to do marketing, whatever, it's a matter of time until you implode. And so, um, so anyways, one thing about my website, for instance, is we hire a company. They, they cost a lot of money, but they, um, they help us a lot grow tremendously as well. So um, you can find us uh, uh, on there. You can you can see uh, we have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, we have about I can't remember now. I think like three four thousand subscribers or so. It's pretty cool. I make like a hundred dollars a month on YouTube ads right now. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it buys me like my uh, my coffee for the month, you know. So uh, it's it's coming along. YouTube is actually amazing, by the way. Uh, I shoot a video, and what I do is I don't. It's hard to shoot a video and post it and spend a lot of time. So we just hire a guy. He comes in. I'll spend like four hours to shoot like 20 videos. And then he'll just post them like once a month, but, uh, once a week for the next 10, 20 weeks. And we have like new content coming on YouTube like every week for the next like year now. Because we just spend like one or two days shooting straight. And he edits everything and does it all and pieces it all together. And we just kind of sit in front of camera and talk. And I've gotten so many patients uh, for myopia but especially scleral lens patients from my YouTube videos. I get at least one a week from, from my YouTube wow. videos. And then I just spend like one day shooting. That's it. And those videos are going to be there forever. And they keep getting more and more views. So it's interesting. It's so, it's so easy in optometry to actually make it. So there's no one doing anything. No one's blogging. No one's making videos. No one's doing an amazing podcast like this except for you, you know, and a couple others. <laughs> so it's, it's, to me, it's always, uh, there's so much opportunity. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll have uh, all of those details in the show notes so people can uh, learn a little bit more about uh, about Tom and one of the amazing things that he's doing. Thank you for hanging out with me today on the podcast. It's uh, always a pleasure to uh, to learn from you, my man. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe so you can hear about other awesome people like Ton on the next episode. Thank you. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.